Shalom, salam, peace. I think it's important for all three of those words, which are three different communities, Christians, Jews, and Muslims, have for thousands of years said inside each community, that one of those words, really important to be able to say them to each other, with each other, uh, to remind us that we have a lot to learn from each other, a lot of connection that can be joyful to make and dangerous to not make. And in fact, I think we're at a moment of world history when it's really crucial for Christians, Jews, and Muslims to be able to say words of peace with each other, to learn from each other, and to um, learn deeply the spiritual energies in each of our traditions. And that's what the tent of Abraham, Hagar, and Sarah has been doing this uh, six years now. We've been gathering for two to four days at a time to share our spiritual journeys, typically between 12 and 20 people, each of these retreats. Uh, and from the sharing of our spiritual journeys and our learning to pray together, we have developed ways of acting in the world. We created a book called The Tent of Abraham, uh, of which I was one of the co-authors together with a Sufi Muslim and a Benedictine nun, uh, which took the stories of Abraham and looked at them as how we can learn from them to make peace with each other. Uh, we helped create a call from Christian Jews and Muslims for peacemaking in the broader Middle East, the whole territory that Abraham and Hagar and Sarah traveled through from all the way from Iran and Iraq to Israel and Palestine, to Egypt, to what's now Saudi Arabia. And we discovered and made real the possibility of sharing some of the crucial uh, festivals of the three traditions in 2005, 2006, and 2007, Ramadan, the sacred Muslim month, and the sacred month of the Jewish tradition with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and Sukkot and several important Christian holy days, the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi and the Protestant Worldwide Communion Sunday all came in a tight cluster of time. And we worked out ways of reaching out to people to say, we should celebrate these festivals together, not squishing them into a least common denominator, but sharing the celebration of them with each other. And we've spoken out for ending the war in Iraq, and we've begun to think about next steps, especially dealing with the way in which Muslims and other immigrants to the United States are now under enormous pressure. So we've just been discussing that this weekend. The birthing of the tent of Abraham, Hagar, and Sarah came through the Shalom Center as a midwife. I'm director of the Shalom Center. It's now uh, 25 years old. Um, it is rooted in the Jewish community, but from the beginning has reached out to learn from other religious communities as well. The idea is to learn from our spiritual and religious teachings, especially the Jewish ones, how to go about making peace and justice and uh, sustainable earth that isn't ruining itself or the human race ruining it. Um, in this next uh, generation. And part of what we discovered we needed to do uh, to accomplish that was to learn from and with other uh, religious traditions, which is why we asked people to gather who then decided to name themselves, ourselves, the Tent of Abraham, Hagar, and Sarah, to stay in meeting at least once a year. So that's been the history of this effort, uh, we are working, I, I think there are two major areas in which the Shalom Center is now working. One is concerning the global climate crisis, what most people call global warming. I call it global scorching, because it seems to me warming is at some unconscious level, even if you say you're against global warming and trying to stop it, when they keep calling it warming, it feels warm, it feels nice. Um, the truth of the danger is much more like scorching than it is like warming. So that's why I call it global scorching and the 
global climate crisis, not just climate change. So we're working on that and how you bring religious tradition, especially Jewish tradition, but not only, to bear on uh, helping people work through what it means to deal with that. It's not easy. And we're also working on peacemaking and especially interfaith or multi-religious efforts to make peace. Um, at some deep level of what we do is a consciousness that all of human history, and in fact probably all of biological history on this planet, is a kind of rhythm of control and community, of exerting more control over the environment or human beings more control over each other, and then discovering that it's important to broaden the community. Um, if you simply exert control, sometimes I think of it as if an amoeba begins eating, drinking the sugar in the nearest vicinity and, and grows enough to split and make two amoebae and then four and eight and so on, this seems like an unlimited process and you get many, 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 many amoeba. But if that's all you do, at some point you use up all the sugar and all the amoeba die. The successful amoeba is the one who knows how to put limits on its own proliferation and to encourage the emergence of other species that can make a, an ecosystem. And then there are fewer amoeba, but they live on and on and on, many generations. Uh, that's what an ecosystem is. It's made up of species, each of which is both successful and limits its own success deliberately to allow, I mean, if, if uh, flowers used up all the energy in the vicinity, there would be no bees and then there would be no flowers. Well, human beings take, it's painful for human beings to learn this lesson. We tend to want to expand our power and then when disaster is hovering right on the brink, then we may learn to expand our community. When the Roman Empire shattered the ancient form of biblical Israel, uh, it took a couple of centuries for some groups of Jews to invent, create rabbinic Judaism, a new kind of community, which could reach out in ways that Biblical Israel rooted in a single land could not re uh, uh, reach out. And it, some of Jews at the same time created Christianity, another kind of community, but also a wholly new kind of community, which could reach out as well, not be just rooted in a single land. Well, it, was, it took both the, the benefits and the disaster of the Roman Empire to make that happen. The Roman Empire brought connection, it brought roads, it brought uh, an economy that embraced the entire Mediterranean, and all that helped make it possible for new forms of community to flourish. It also was disastrous for the old forms, and in many ways humanly disastrous. I mean, crucifixions, uh, uh, a whole series of things. Modernity is to Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, the way the Roman Empire was to Biblical Judaism. We are now in the same situation. All those traditions are now struggling to figure out what to do. And we have to create a new form of community in response.